Now, there is this other property. There are a few other properties here. We'll have a look at what these are. Um, take a look at this one. Uh, we have the JDBC connection pool size. Uh, you know, it's set as one, which we'll do for now. We'll have a look at what the connection pool size is and how to change it in the later tutorials. Next, we have something called as a SQL dialect. Uh, the dialect has been set as H2 dialect. Uh, this is the case because we you know it was using H2 database. Now we need to look at what is the dialect for Postgres. Now this is again a setting which depends on the database. So depending on what database you're connecting to, you will have to set the right dialect. Now what does a dialect mean? Dialect is, uh, is it's, it's a configuration that you specify here so that uh, Hibernate knows what kind of language it needs to use to talk to uh, the database. Now, what do I mean by a language to use to talk to the database? Isn't it all SQL? Yes, most of the queries that we write are SQL, but uh, some of the databases have some peculiarities when it comes to how we use SQL to connect to the database. Uh, the way you run queries in Oracle is different from the way you'd run queries in a Postgres or a MySQL, for example. There are some nuances which are specific to the database itself. So if we specify what kind of a dialect Hibernate needs to use to connect to the database, Hibernate will then use that particular uh, dialect or that particular language in order to write and execute SQL queries. Since we are not directly writing the SQL queries, since Hibernate is doing it for us, we need to provide Hibernate with this information so that Hibernate knows what kind of a SQL dialect the database is using. So this is again a class which is inside the Hibernate package. So this is something that you would have added along with the Hibernate library. So it's over here. Now we need to pull up the class inside this library that is specific for Postgres. So what we have mentioned here, the H2 dialect is specific for H2. Now what would be the class which is specific for Postgres? Now we need to search for the particular package, which is the org hibernate dialect here. Okay, here it is. We have the org hibernate dialect package. And inside this, here you can see there are classes for every database that you can think of. Um, see, H2 is over here, HSQL is here, Informix, and uh, all the MySQL, Oracle, everything is over here. So what we need is this Postgres. We have Postgres plus also. We just we'll just use Postgres SQL dialect, which is the basic SQL dialect. So we will replace this with this class name that we see here. So it is PostgreSQL dialect. So this class has information to Hibernate, which says what are the SQL vari variations that we need to use specifically for writing queries for the Postgres database. So now that this is set, we don't have to worry about all the other uh, configurations, uh, but let's quickly go over them anyway. At a very high level, Okay, so we have uh, another configuration, which is the second level cache. Don't worry about this. We will look at what second level cache is later. Here we have uh, a property called show SQL, which, uh, which is set to true, which means Hibernate will print out all the SQL that it generates. It's a, it's a handy feature for now since we are learning Hibernate, so we'll leave this as on. Uh, this is an important property. We have hpm to ddl.auto and it is set to create. What this means is, depending on what we configure as model objects, it's gonna create the database schema that's required to save those model objects. Remember I told you earlier that we don't have to create the tables which are required for saving these objects. Hibernate is gonna do it by itself. Now how Hibernate does it is, say I wanna, I wanna pass an object to Hibernate and say, hey Hibernate, save this object for me. Now Hibernate is gonna look at the database and see if there is already a table available to save the object. Now if the table is not available, Hibernate will create the table for us and it'll have all the right columns which are required to save all the member variables of the object. So we will leave this as create so that we don't have to create the tables ourselves. Now here we have something called as 
the mapping class here it says names the annotated entity class so what this is doing is uh, here we need to list out all the model classes that we have configured so that's going to be the next step we will just leave this as it is for now so depending on what model classes we create we will have to mention the name of the class over here so step one is done almost well except for uh, this particular entry so this we will fill after we complete step two now what is step two uh, after the first first step which is uh, configuring the hibernate XML. The second step was to actually write the model class. So let's do that now. I will say new class. The package will be the usual Java brains package with a DTO next to it because we are writing a model class. I'll call this class user details and finish okay i have my user details model class here i'll just have a couple of member variables i will have an integer user id we'll make this a private and i'll have a string username for our first example, this should do. Uh, I just have an ID and a name. Now let me generate the getters and setters. Okay, now we have our model class with the user ID member variable and the name member variable. The ID is an integer and the name is a string. They are of private, uh, both the member variables are private. So I have defined public getters and setters so that they are accessible. Now, this is the model class that Hibernate needs to persist. So in order to do this, we need to go to the Hibernate configuration file and specify that in this section, the mapping class. Uh, we said that this would be replaced with the model class, no matter how many model classes you have, you will have to list down all those classes here. So since we are having just a user details class, I will list the user details class here with the complete package name. User details. Okay, so now this completes the first step, which is configuring uh, Hibernate using this hibernate.cfg.xml. So I'll close this file. We are not done with this yet. There are still a couple of things we need to do here in the model class. So what I need to do here is to give some clues to Hibernate as to how to persist this class. Uh, and the way we do that, the way we configure this is by using annotations here. We can also configure this using XMLs. We'll look at that in the later tutorials. But in this tutorial, we're going to use annotations. So there are uh, two annotations that we have to use, at least these two annotations. At the bare minimum, we need to specify the two annotations to this uh, model. The first of those annotations is at entity. As soon as I type that, it comes up with an import suggestion. I, when I open this, I see two possible options. One is uh, import entity from Java X dot persistence, and another is import entity from org dot hibernate dot annotations. Now, which one do we choose? We will go with the Java X dot persistence. Uh, even though this is a hibernate tutorial, we're not going to go with the hibernate package. I'll explain why we're going with this particular uh, Java X dot persistence import later. So just go with this for now. So this is one in this is one annotation. The second annotation is called ID, and uh, that needs to be on top of uh, the member variable which you want to allocate as the primary key. Now let me use the ID uh, the user ID property, and I will mention the at 
ID annotation here. So again, I need to do the import. I will import from Java X dot persistence. Now, so what are these two annotations doing? First, entity is telling Hibernate that it needs to treat this class as an entity and it needs to save it. Well, we have already configured this um, in the XML, haven't we? We have, uh, let me open up this XML. Okay, here we've already given the name of the class as an annotated entity class. Now, why do we have to give an entity here as well? We need to give this because there are a few other ways in which we can, uh, we can make uh, an object annotated without it having to be an entity. We'll have a look at that in the later tutorials, but what, what this means is that all your model classes which have annotations have to be listed here so that Hibernate looks up at the annotations in those classes and takes action accordingly. But in each of those classes, you need to have the corresponding annotations which dictate how Hibernate is gonna treat those classes. And uh, the thing that we need to do at on the top of the class header, you know, on top of this public class class name, is the entity, which means that we are telling Hibernate to treat this class as an entity class. The second annotation, as I told you, it's an ID annotation which says that this field will be the primary key for this object. So Hibernate knows that it needs to treat the values of this field as the primary key. Now with these two annotations, we are actually done with the second step, which is writing the model class. So we'll be using only this class for now. Um, you can have as many model classes as you want. In, our, this, in this example, we'll be using just one model class, which is the user details. We have given all the annotations that Hibernate needs to get going. So the entity and ID class are the only two that are mandatory. So now that we have done this, let's move on to the next step.